All right, fellas, good luck, but like not too much. Slow it down, Dan. Slow it down. So she said. Yeah, yeah. Four inch with a five. You're yeah, blessed, you're bud. You're blessed. Where's everyone going? I'm gonna try not to put a hook in my hand today. Yeah, let me draft off you. Shake and bake, baby. All right. Good luck to you. Yeah, you too. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Hambone Fishing. Today we are talking about Queen City Kayak Bass Fishing event number seven, High Rock Lake on the Yadkin Chain of Rivers. This lake is known for some biggins though, and there were some biggins caught, but I, I didn't catch any. However, the lake is full of big old bass, it's full of big old crappie, and everything else goes along with it. First time I'd been on the lake in about a year, I had no time to practice, no time to pre-fish, nothing. I, it's my third time ever being on the lake as well, so I, I don't really have much experience. I have fished a certain area, which is the area that I fished during the tournament, obviously. It's a great area. It's got a little bit cleaner water. Uh, the water was really high. It had been high all week. Uh, it's been super hot. I knew the water was going to be probably mid 80s. I think it was around 84 in the morning. I knew it was going to get super hot, super sunny. And so I had to catch some fish quick. You know, I didn't really exactly know kind of what was going to be going on. I didn't know if there was going to be a mayfly bite. I didn't know if there was, if it was going to be a, a shallow bite, a deep bite. So what I started with is the popper. Uh, this is just a Strike King Popper feathered tail. Check it out. Sixteen and a half, sixteen and a half inch start. So that first topwater fish was a great bite. It was a great way to start. Sixteen and a half inches, man, that's a great way to start the day. I threw this uh, popper for a little bit longer, then I picked up the sassy stick and kind of went to work. And unfortunately, I only caught one. and a half but it's a fish so at this point I have two fish a 16 and a half which is a solid fish probably wasn't gonna call that out and then I had a 12 and a half incher just to fill a spot in my limit and it got slow I was throwing a Texas rig Texas rig craw, uh, killer craw, a zoom lizard. I was throwing a shaky head. I was throwing a jig. Um, I threw the, the popper a little bit more. I threw a walking bait. I fished some really good looking areas and it was about three or four hours that went by where I didn't have a bite. I didn't have a sniff, nothing. And then I was fishing the shaky head and I broke it off. And at this point, I had no, I don't know what made me pick it up, but I just, I picked up the drop shot. I tied on a drop shot, Robo Worm, Morning Dawn, four and a half inch, 
um, straight tail worm. And it is probably my confidence bait when it comes to a drop shot. I know there's a lot, I mean, you can, you can use a, a Dizzy Diamond, you can use a Ned Dizzy, you can use a Sassy Stick. You can just about, I mean, drop shot just about anything. So I just really like the, the Robo Worm, the Morning Dawn color specifically and in kind of the worm shape it's a little more finessey the water was a little dingy so i didn't know exactly if the fish were going to see it or not but it started i i started fishing at the end of docks and you know kind of some brush piles i saw along the uh the end there and that was just hindsight i think about it, i'm like well this is a really good crappie lake crappy crappy whatever you want to call it really good crappie lake so a lot of people have brush piles off the ends of their docks because they like to fish for them so i saw some of those and you know admittedly at the time i was just like well i'm gonna fish docks once i kind of developed the pattern it was it was more so those brush piles at the end of docks but anyway the bite was quick when i picked up the drop shot Thirteen and a quarter. It's another fish. Dang it, 11-incher. So I caught those two basically back to back and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I've got my limit and I've got something that's really working and I can run this for the rest of the day. And that's what I did. And it just, I just kept catching fish, including this one. Yes, sir. Yes! Inches, baby. 17 and a quarter. That's what I'm talking about. See you, pal. Thank you. That 17 and a quarter inch fish was a real momentum swing. Um, because, because of how slow it was in the beginning of the day, I just, I don't know. I, 
you just get into a mindset where you're like, well, none of my confidence baits are working. I was throwing the sassy stick. They weren't shallow. I threw it in some of the juiciest looking places and they just, they weren't there. I was throwing the popper. I was throwing the Texas rig. Nothing was working up shallow kind of on the bank. So when I picked up the drop shot, I was like, well, let's focus on the ends of docks. And that 1725 kind of solidified that pattern and was just like, all right, cool. And if you notice how long I had that worm down there and was kind of shaking it, the bites weren't coming very quickly most times. It was more of a, you know, second or third drop down and just kind of shaking it. What the problem was is that wind and the boat traffic was driving me nuts. As soon as I'd make a little flip in or a cast, I was getting blown 15 feet away and all of a sudden I'm dragging into some of these brush piles and I'd get hung up and I'd have to shake it off or break off or whatever. So dropping straight down, you can kind of feel those and you can kind of sit on top of them or around them and kind of do it that way. But with that wind being miserable, I didn't really have much of a choice. So that's what made it difficult. And, you know, here's a couple clips of some more fish that I caught throughout the day and kind of what I was doing. Another 12 and a half incher. Thirteen and a half. It's an inch call, but you know. I don't know if this is going to help, but we'll find out. So when it was all said and done, I had 60 and a half inches at the end of the day, which put me in 12th place and probably solidified me into the TOC at the end of the year um, with, I think, four finishes in the top 15 and then nothing below, I think, 35. As far as the finish goes, I'm pretty confident that uh, I'll be fishing in October with the TOC, but it was a tough day and you could see kind of with that wind and how I was fishing with that area, those areas is 
I couldn't stay in one spot. And I think that if I'd have been able to, if the wind wouldn't have been as bad, the boats are kind of whatever. If the wind wouldn't have been as bad, I think I'd have been able to sit at the end of those docks a little bit longer, have more productive casts and do that kind of a thing. Then I probably could have called up another, you know, inch or two and, and maybe cashed a check. I don't know. Because I was at 60 and a half inches and then 11th place was 62 inches. So I'd have had to have some legitimate calls in order to get into that top uh, to cash a check. So that's it for High Rock Lake. I hope you enjoyed the footage. Um, you know, the, the summer is dragging on. We're, it's really hot down here. We're gonna start seeing really high temperatures in the water and I'm gonna try to mix it up. Maybe not, maybe do a little bit something different than some bass fishing. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Hit that like button for me. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. And I hope you guys have a great day. This is Graham with Handbone Fishing. Take it easy.